we're going to be creating an interactive list. And this list is going to build a table using JavaScript from the data within an array. We've got a number of objects there within that array. And within those objects, we've got a score value, a name, and an ID. So when these get clicked, they're going to increment and increase. And then we can also add in new items into the list, and it creates a new table row. And then these can also be interact with individually. And this is all coming up in this lesson. Let's go into the HTML file, and within the output area, I'm going to add a few input element or add an input element. So this is just going to be type text in order to prepare for this exercise, and we'll give it a ID of add friend. And we can select those using JavaScript code. And then also we can create an input. And this input will be type button. So this will give us a button element. And for the ID, let's do add new, as we're going to be adding a new person into this list. And then save that. And that will give us the new item that we're adding. So this will give us a list area where we can add new people into it. And then also within the output, just have an output area. So I'm going to add the output area just below as a separate div. And that's the one that's going to contain the class of output. So we'll output all of the values into the output area. So we're going to select these and then make use of them within the JavaScript code. I've got a file called app10.js that we're linking to. There's a couple of there's some, several items within the array. So these are the list of default that we're going to start with. And we want to select the elements that we want to use. So we're selecting the output. And we can also use the query selector in order to select the input area. And we're going to add all of these globally. So selecting the button and selecting it by using its ID. So we can use the hash, add new. And then just double check to make sure that this is the button value. And then the text area has a value of add friend or an ID of add friend. So we can select that one as well. The same way where we can use the hash and we add friend and give it a name of add friend. So that gives us the values that, get, that we can then interact with. Let's add an event to the button. So add event listener to the button. The but event that we're listening for is a click. And whenever the button gets clicked, we're going to add the new value into the array. And then we're going to build out the array object. So take the array value and push. And the value that we're pushing in there is going to be from the input area. So it's going to be under the add friend value. And save that. And for now, what we can do is we'll console log the my array out. And that gives us the list of values. And also set a default value. We can do that within the JavaScript code. So that we don't always have to constantly keep typing it. Uh, this is just good for while we're testing. And just add in my name there. So while we're testing, we can automatically populate that. It's going to make it a little bit easier for the testing purposes. So now that we've added the event listener, we also want a way to build the content for the page. So we want to build it out into a table format. So let's create a function. And this function is just going to be build. And we're going to create the elements on the fly here. So what we need is we need a main table. And this will just be our table output. So using the document create elements. And the element that we're going to be creating is going to be a table. And we can add in the rows and columns into the rows and add that into the output with the append and adding in the table output. So that adds the table, although we can't see it, it's been added in there. So if you go into the code of the elements and you go down to the output area within the output, that's our table that we're going to add the content into. So once we've got the table, we're ready to build the page elements. And that's all contained within the array. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to clear the table. So if there's any existing content into the table, we can clear all of that out. So update the inner HTML 
and just set it to be blank. So that will remove any previous content there, and that gives us the ability to loop through the array using the for each and each one of the elements in the array. We can then create a new row. So we'll call it T row using the document and create element and creates a table row. And then using our main table output, and just as we did for when we created the table, we append it to the parent. So that adds it onto the page. See what we've got now. When we go into the source code, into the body, and go all the way down, output, and there's our table. So when we run the build, it's going to kick off and create all of the page elements. So we want to do that here after we've set up the table. And now when we go in, we should see that the table is ready within the output. So we've got a bunch of blank rows. So let's add in some content into the rows. And we'll do this by creating the number of cells. So this is going to be the first row. And using the same thing that we just did where we create an element. And then create the table cell column. And then the data that we want to hold within the column. And we'll just add in the text content. And the text content is going to be whatever we've got within the element. And then we also want to append the table to the element, the table column. Let's add in a few other ones. So we also want to have an ability for a counter. And I'm going to change these into more complex objects. So this will be a list of objects within the array. So to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more dynamic in what we can do. So just add in the curly brackets and then for the name, and we'll move all of these values in there. And then what we want to do is have a score. And the default will be just be zero. So we'll start out with the score of zero. And you can add in other values or we can have a item and this will just be zero or one and then we can increment these. So go ahead and duplicate that structure for the object and then we can just update the names in there. And you can also have default scores and so on. So this is just going to be nice for having a more dynamic output and then just give them different item numbers or that actually let's call these IDs so that the user has its own dynamic ID. So when we add it, this is no longer going to be an array, it's going to be an object. So we need to create the object. And we need to create it within the same structure as we just did. And that value is going to be coming from the input value instead of a default value there. And then this can be whatever the my array length is plus one. So to give it a different ID value there and copy that. And so this will give us a different output within the array. So there's our objects and we're ready to add in the different column values. So as we're looping through each one of these, we need to select the object that we've got within the array. So the first value there that we want is going to be the name. So it's going to output the name. So copy that structure to add the next column. Maybe we want the ID. Or if we want the ID first, we can put that first. So whatever order you want, it's a little bit easier when you just add the code to whatever the order is that you want. And then the last one will be whatever the score is. And we need to have these as different. So just call it TD1, TD2, so that they have different distinguishable variable names. So that gives us the items there with the count. So what we wanted to do is we want to make them interactive. So whenever they get clicked, we want to update the values for the counter. So let's do that. Well, we're going to add the 
quick event, R2 the mean, so add event listener, and we're going to add a click event. And because these objects are still within the scope, we can reference them as we need to. So let's update the element score. And this is where we need the, in, the index number. So get that from the list as we're going through the array. So do element score plus one and then update whatever the element score is. So now when we're clicking, the scores are increasing there. So see that we get this dynamic increase value and we still need to add whatever we're adding a new value we want to add that user. So let's uh, create that as well. When we can just run the build function. So now that we've updated the array, we add a new person and it doesn't look like they got the ID there. And that should actually be ID. That's why it's not showing up there. Just save that. And that gives us the ID. And we add a new person. So that doesn't mess up our counts. Our counts are still the same. Doesn't matter how many we add. We get all of the counts being added there. And going into here, let's add a little bit of styling to our table so that we can actually see the table contents. We can set the table row. Let's set the table as a whole. We'll set the width to be 100%. So that gives us a little bit more structure. And we probably don't need 25% uh, for the first one. So let's uh, decrease that. And we probably don't even need the 25% for the last one. So let's save that. And then also for all of the table cells, we'll add a border and then just a slight border so that we can see the table contents. So when you click it, there's the incrementing values and there's our new values that get added in. 